What is going on guys and girls, it's Ghost Robo and welcome back to the beautiful and bold Battleborn. Today we're deep diving into the combat botanist Miko and it's a eclectic menagerie of magical abilities. Now you'll notice I say it's because as you can surely see, Miko is a mushroom and I'm not quite sure if fungi are male or female or a little bit of both, so for the sake of the video we'll go with it's. Joined up by the rest of our Battleborn heroes here in Montana, enters the arena, Thorn, another Eldritch just like Miko, they come from the same world so hopefully they can cooperate quite nicely together, Oscar Mike bringing the oomph, and Arendi with the rage from the skies above. We are ready for action and Miko is a medic, and so I actually saved it as one of the last characters I played but I, I shouldn't have, because Miko does a whole lot more than just sit back and heal. It was pretty impressive and pretty fun to play. Uh, one of his abilities, or its abilities, is Biosynthesis, which allows him to recover a whole bunch of health uh, very quickly and increase the rate at which he heals teammates. So the first pick on the DNA trail there was to give me movement speed uh, upgrades while I'm healing teammates. The second here um, is to allow Miko to heal itself while healing others uh, via biosynthesis. Uh, next, we're just going to go with a simple all cooldown reduction, and then fourth and final here at the start, Trail of Spores, which impacts the Cloud of Spores ability, where Miko hurls a spore sack that explodes, does a bunch of damage, and leaves a cloud of slow for the enemies uh, who are amongst it. And I just added a bunch of extra spores um, so that it'll deal even more painful slug-like slowness to everybody around. There you see that sack of goo that damages and takes everybody down to nap time speeds. Um, Miko's ultimate is pretty cool as well, but we'll get to that later on. The primary ability is these throwable uh, kunai knives. And again, this is where you'll start to see that Miko is much more than just sit back and do the medic job because these are poison tipped. Uh, they can be modified via that DNA trail. And this is my heal beam here. So he's a dual threat, or it's a dual threat, she's a dual threat, I don't even know. Help me out, Gearbox. What the heck is Miko? Um, so I'm healing guys, and, and again, like, that's different from almost everybody else that I've played in Battleborn. I've played 10 heroes, everyone that's been playable thus far. Um, and Miko sort of, he, he brings, or she, or gosh, Miko the Mushroom brings a whole different kind of arsenal to the battlefield. And so at first I was like, okay, my job here is just to heal. Um, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to actually push the limits of this character and see what kind of damage can be dealt and see how effective Miko can be if, say, my teammates aren't that strong or I don't have, you know, teammates I have to worry about. Or, you know, it could go either way, whether you're playing with a really great group that doesn't need your healing prowess or you're playing with a really bad group where you have to sort of stand up and bear the brunt of, of the assault from the enemies. Um, I wanted to see if that was possible. And... Long story short, it definitely is possible. Miko moves very quickly and is able to launch off a lot of attacks, um, like one after the other after the other. And you can sort of coordinate that biosynthesis where you heal yourself uh, to make sure Miko isn't too vulnerable. You'll notice Miko has no shield, and that's something that uh, it shares in common with Thorn, both being Eldred. Maybe that's just a characteristic of the people and uh, the creatures from that world. But you'll notice I am dealing quite a bit of damage. Of course, we've got Oscar Mike and Arendi handling the brunt. Uh, of the aggro, but I'm able to do some as well. It's important to remember though that you are here to heal uh, and that's what you do want to focus on primarily, but with that long range attack there um, in that cloud of spores and then later on you'll see with my amazing fungus among us uh, ultimate ability Nico packs a punch. So we're tearing through, taking out a bunch of enemies as best we can. I think this is a pretty good group. Um, I've played enough Battleborn now to see how like the synergy between a bunch of the different heroes can kind of come together. And it's interesting when you have someone like Thorn who's able to stand back and deal massive headshot damage um, from afar. Um, and then you've got someone like Miko who can kind of play a little bit of both, either back or forward, attack or defense. Um, we've got Oscar Mike who is basically just like deal damage, deal damage, deal damage. And then we've got Arendi who's kind of like that you know, ace in the hole type character with her superstar pillars uh, of hate energy, rage energy, whatever you want to call it, from the sky. Um, her demonic energy, I guess, as she blasts everybody in sight. Um, and also is a little bit vulnerable. So we are kind of a vulnerable group right here, considering the fact that Miko and Thorn do not have shields, and Arendi um, also is a little bit low on the, on the health side of the spectrum. Uh, but do remember that this is not totally tuned for how the final retail version will be. Um, it is made easier for uh, convention uh, play and for just ease of use for new players. And so you'll see me kind of tearing through. And, and some of that is because I'm pretty good at the game and uh, I have some like sweet high score stuff that I was going for. But at the same time, I uh, do know that the full game uh, will pack a lot more of a challenge 
um, than this here. But I'm kind of moving back and forth between healing and attacking. And you'll notice that the heal beam is not one of Miko's abilities. So it doesn't sacrifice one of those three slots in the bottom right corner of your screen. It's actually his secondary uh, attack. So you've got the primary of the kunai and then the secondary of the heal beam. So you can very effectively and, and briskly switch back and forth. And again, really this dual threat is, is kind of what I see Miko as. And he ended up being uh, one of my favorite characters. Okay, so we've leveled up and now Fungus Among Us is now available. So what this is, is Miko hurls basically his head and then it damages uh, enemies and heals teammates. So again, thinking about sort of that that dual purpose, everything kind of comes together in that way. And it's been really exciting to see how the different heroes um, that I've played and the ones that have been revealed kind of bear their own mark entirely. And I got to imagine that balance will be crazy um, in terms of how that works out. But it is super cool to see like, hey, uh, you know, Miko does not fit like a mold of all these other medics that then have, oh, this one has the assault rifle, this one has the shotgun, this one has the healing sniper, this one has the heal beam. It's much more like, hey, we've got these crazy characters, and let's come up with an entirely unique and diverse way for them to contribute. And you'll notice I'm doing fine in terms of damage and everything. It's working out quite well. I also really like the animations on Miko, how, like, sort of his, like, fungi dress slash garb, like, lows as you jump and um, that's something that they really emphasized to me was that you know there's so much detail and animation and it, it translates to personality within these characters um, and I think it does really you know forward the Borderlands look and aesthetic into a next-gen capacity because you will notice how fluid these characters move and again how diverse they are just simple stuff again like that the flow of that garb the way he throws off his head um, just like the little like prayer thing he does there, the way the kunai knives kind of reappear and they're flicked. I don't know, I think it's pretty impressive, um, especially for a first person game where you're traditionally used to just seeing a guy holding a gun. So in terms of like balance though, I am very eager to see uh, multiplayer and how that's all going to pan out and I'm hoping that I get to check it out soon um, and my spidey sense says that I might have that opportunity uh, pretty soon. I'm hoping that they're able to reveal it um, super soon because the game comes out in February. Uh, and they did announce at PAX Prime um, stuff about, like, you know, that there is going to be sort of a beta test type thing or an alpha test or whatever they're calling it that people will be able to get into. And hopefully that drops sometime this holiday season. That would be really fun um, to check out other levels or multiplayer or whatever they, they drop in there. Um, because I can't see myself playing Battleborn as a long session or short session type game, which to me is exciting because a lot of times I don't have the the patience or really the schedule structure to accommodate really long sessions. So I like the fact that there is this kind of single player thing where I can evolve and upgrade my profile. I and mean, we've talked about it a little bit before, but the whole loot system, so long as that is all transferable across multiplayer and single player, which I 100% I believe it is, and as far as I know that's how it works, um, is that your profile is you know, a, a profile that, speaking of dual threat, can be used in both sides of, of that battlefield, um, both the single player co-op and the multiplayer. I love that room right there. It's so fun to see how fast you can wreck everybody through the door, and once you play with a group that knows this level, it's like bam, 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 that is just such a choke point uh, for insta-death. And I think that playing this level at least 20 times, it shows that when there is loot added, it will be still fun to go through with different characters and rank up and work your way to the top. Um, and apparently they are working aggressively on making sure that the top ability, like what you unlock at the final level or final point for the characters, um, is really worth it, which I'm excited to see. Whether that's a super special skin or maybe even a complete um, costume overhaul, I think that would be really cool. Um, or, you know, I don't want them to add like too many DNA insane options. I know they are going with a third option for a lot of those um, little like either or options as you do level up your character and ultimately like I just my, my only concern with this game at this point really I'm not worried about content I'm not worried about characters I mean they've revealed a bunch of new ones in terms of like the Egyptian goddess if you've seen her um, there's another girl who I believe her name is Melka and she has like weird robo arm biotech thing and then they've got um, like the flying eagle guy like that doesn't bother me um, the style, the variety of the environments, I've seen some other stuff, doesn't bother me um, or concern me. The only thing that does is the balance. Um, and it, it's nice because there's some issues that I've pointed out here in this 
demo build. Um, specifically, like, the way that there's some issues with hitting the characters from the front or behind when they spawn in, and the delay when they spawn in, in terms of being able to damage them. And I talked to one of the devs uh, at PAX Prime, and those issues have already been completely rectified and fixed in the build that they have uh, on site, and that they're working on to eventually, you know, send through cert and all that. So, really good news that they're placing such an extreme emphasis on making sure that this game is balanced and is effective in all of the mechanical operations that are needed for people to really dive in and enjoy. Because the last thing you want with a game like this that is so, um, you know, it's looking for you to be involved and replay and, and compete is for it to, you know, dive into this whole like, wow, it doesn't really feel balanced, things don't work how they are, and I'm frustrated. Obviously, that's the case for every game, but specifically a game that is, is so built on your hands-on experience. Um, because there is a story in Battleborn, but obviously, as you can see, like, the crux of this game is you doing work with your friends or alone um, against the enemy. So it needs to be super solid, and I'm super glad that they seem to have that at the forefront of their mind. Um, and it sounds like they do have a plan in place to balance all of this craziness. But back to what I was saying, like, long session, sure, you can go multiplayer with your friends for a few hours, but if you want to just go through some of these single-player things, set a high score. I've heard that they're adding some, some interesting scoring stuff as well in there, which would be cool. Um then that is also viable, you know, because you can just play a match or a round and work towards building that XP or whatever they end up calling it on your profile, or maybe even getting rare loot. I don't know how the loot's exactly going to be handled, but I'll assume it's some sort of treasure chest type system or key system where there is chance involved, which then makes it hopefully, you know, a little bit better chance based on your performance. I'd hate to see them delve into Destiny 1.0 territory where all of a sudden you're the best player on your strike team by far and you get no loot and they get something super sweet. That's the most frustrating feeling. So I hope performance does kind of um, predicate a little bit of, of how the loot is distributed, but I also like that random chance um, because then it kind of keeps you coming back for more. So Battleborn is just shaping up to be super fun. I was able to play with my podcast buddies, Max, Gabe, um, and I even brought my friend Trevor to test it out at PAX Prime uh, to get sort of They've heard about it for so long, but I wanted them to play it hands-on. That's really like the test of, the true test of how a game holds up. And I was super happy to see them enjoying it and talking through it and wanting to play as different characters and run through again and again. Um, and it's a good sign because this is a game that obviously will thrive on its community. And I hope that they're able to build a strong one. And I think something it has... Um, really to its advantage that is different from something like say Evolve when Evolve started is there is such a fun and charming variety in the characters that having 25 in the base package all so different you won't feel I don't think you'll feel a burnout in any way because like I said like you've seen here Miko plays completely different from Orendi completely different uh, from Oscar Mike completely different from Thorn, completely different from Phoebe, completely different from Marquise, completely, you know, on and on and on. Um, so that is where Battleborn's, I think, secret strength lies, and you have to play it really to get it, because maybe here it just looks like, oh, you're pressing right trigger and firing kunai, or you're pressing right trigger and firing a gun, or you're pressing right trigger and firing a bow and arrow, and it's like really semantics, but in practice, like, it's pretty darn sweet, and I think that DNA system also is something that I've come to really appreciate, um, and I want that in, like, all games. I love the leveling up on the fly and improving your characters and upgrading. Um, and it's something that you're seeing not in the exact same way, but kind of trending around the multiplayer space. Even in terms of Call of Duty Black Ops 3, it's not exactly identical, but you are building a meter towards a super ability in that game. And that's something that adds a lot of variety and kind of pizzazz to otherwise you know, plain old Call of Duty multiplayer matches. Obviously, we can bring up other games, you know, like Overwatch and whatnot. Um, but to me, I, I think that, I don't know, I think when push comes to shove, I think Battleborn is going to end up having the most charm uh, of its, you know, it, it, in terms of its genre or its competitors or whatever you want to say, its contemporaries. Uh, I think the charm here will be great. I want to see more enemy types. Um, I think that's going to be critical. And I like the boss introduction. It reminds me a lot of Borderlands, where they come down and have the big name appear. Um, and I want, like, a bunch of bosses. And I think it would be super cool if they found a way, and this is just me spitballing here, but 
You know how Destiny does like dailies or different things where they kind of mix up the flow? I think it would be super epic if they had certain missions or even just one mission or an arena where they could dump in different kinds of challenges, uh, you know, grueling boss runs, things like that, where you could basically have a weekly gauntlet um, to bring your team in and fight. And I don't know if that's something they're already planning. I've never heard of it. I'm just, again, just brainstorming here. Maybe some kind of future DLC. But again, like a mode or a gameplay subtype where, you know, via their, their, it would kind of almost be just like randomly generated. Like we're going to throw in this lineup of bosses with this lineup of enemies, with this lineup of strength or whatever, find a way to beat it. It's almost horde mode, but with Battleborn. And you're bringing in the whole thing of like, what combination of characters deals with these guys best. And I do wonder if certain enemy types, certain uh, bosses are going to be sort of you know, easier or harder to defeat with certain casts of characters, or how that's all going to be handled. Are they all neutral bosses, basically, or is there a little bit of, like, the Pokemon, like, Fire, Water, Grass, where um, some characters are able to have a little bit more of their way with them? Um, and you can see, even here, like, Miko against a flying character can still deal a lot of damage. That Cloud of Spores is really effective. My fast-firing Kunai are effective. I'm going to throw down the damage right at the base. Uh, so if anyone comes up, they're getting damaged. If any of my guys need to go down there to heal, um, they're able to do damage as well. And you'll see that I am at the top of the kill count with Miko. And I want to point that out, and I highlight that screen because it shows that Medic in this game is not boring. And to me, that was the best moment of the day during this session was the fact that, first of all, we crushed that boss so freaking quick. Second of all, Miko, the medic, is not just a medic. That's why they're calling him the combat botanist, because being active and being offensive is also part of its playbook when you're the mushroom man or woman or thing or creature. And I like that, and I hope with the other 15 characters, when I eventually get to play them, I have that diverse experience where I can say, you know what? It's not that Miko is a medic, but it's that he's a combat botanist. And it's not that Melka is a blah blah blah, but it's that she is her own role, and that Battleborn will create its own roles and, you know, types of characters to play, and it won't just fall into a few categories. I think that this game is one of the most exciting ones on the horizon. Um, I love it a lot. And I can't wait to play more. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And just like as one little last reminder, I am in no way being paid, told, sponsored, anything. I just like to play the games that I like to play. And I like to talk about the games that I find the most cool and the most exciting and the most fresh. It is next gen after all. It would be good to start getting some next gen ideas instead of just next gen graphics. So Battleborn delivers on that front for me and maybe for you as well. Until next time though, guys and girls, thanks so much for watching. Fantastic day. Drink some hot chocolate. We will see you all later.